Mac Voices Holiday Gift Guide number seven with Mike Potter, Patrice Brendamore, and Jim Ray, part two. This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by the Mac Voices Slack, available to all patrons of Mac Voices. Sign up today at patreon.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this time around, Mike, Patrice, and Jim help us wrap up Mac Voices Holiday Gift Guide number seven. This is part two, and this is our final gift guide show of 2022. I hope you've enjoyed them. A quick reminder that all the gift picks from all the shows, including this one, can be found in the Master Gift Guide listed on the Mac Voices website, as well as our Flipboard magazine for the Holiday Gift Guide 2022. Let's go back and let the panel do the talking. Mike? Round three. Round three. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to continue this already inappropriately too long conversation that we've been having about the lightning to lightning. Um, I'm curious, you know, with the iPhones having lightning ports, if someone wanted to wire their AirPods Max to the iPhone, how, how would you do it? Well, it seems as if the official answer is to purchase that lightning to three and a half millimeter audio cable. And then if you shop that on Apple site, it says you may also like the lightning to three and a half inch or three and a half millimeter, three and a half millimeter headphone jack adapter. So you purchase two cables, you purchase your lightning to three and a half millimeter audio cable, and then you purchase your lightning to three and a half millimeter headphone jack adapter. If you don't have one already, connect them together, and now you can listen, listen to your, to your iPhone, iPhone with your, with your Max. Max. Oh my oh my there, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, I can well, use Bluetooth. Bluetooth. using a wire connection? I don't think so. Uh, um, some so not, 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 well, I know, I know it's not, not, not with the Air Pods I don't think so. No, no, not with, with the Max. With third party headphones, the advantage is to be wired versus, versus wireless. wireless. Uh, 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 you you can the quality of audio. Yeah, are you yeah, talking about the lossless audio? Yeah, yeah. And I'm not sure that's a really interesting question. Because, of course, we know that it's not lossless audio is not supported with the Air Pods Max. Because, because that, that requi- requi- lost audio, audio requires, requires a wired connection. connection. But, right. but right. Does, right. does that pass passing through, through an analog, an analog uh, uh, jack, jack? Does that does that take out, take out the loss, loss, loss quality? quality? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Okay, okay. Audio, audio geeks, geeks out there, get on, get on that, that and let us know. I had a bad habit in college of doing other people's homework instead of my own. And so, and so I, I, just, I, just, I just I just picked up the ball, ball and ran with, ran with it. We were talking about, about doing, doing homework. homework. Why why was it with me? Oh, exactly. Jeez. Why, why not? not? Why, why not? not? Uh, why not? Uh, but that's but okay, that's okay because, because my third third is, 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 is a rather short, short one. one. It's not going to take a lot of lot exposition or explanation to describe this item. And I, I, so I don't mind spending a little time talking about our headphone lightning jack adapter issue. Um, Chuck, I asked your permission to do this because I have one of these coming for me, but I've not received it yet. But I just love this so much, I thought I would share it. I don't know if uh, you guys are familiar with Cotton Bureau. Mm-hmm. It is an online uh, t-shirt and other stuff you know sweatshirts and and onesies for babies and things like that but a lot of custom designs for t-shirts on their site and this one came up the other day and i just i fell in love with it i had to order it right away i'm gonna share my screen here and show it to you this is called the command plus six color well, I guess St. John's Arms uh, T-shirt, and I, I, I just absolutely love the way this design was created. I love the colors that they picked, the six colors that they picked. Um, I'm familiar with the the uh, T-shirts that Cotton Bureau uses to make these, either whether it's the standard T or the heavyweight T, the Gildan heavyweight tees. It comes in multiple colors, multiple sizes. 
You can get it as a t-shirt, a tank, or a onesie. And you can get uh, men's cuts, women's cuts, youth cuts, toddler cuts. But the design is what I was after. And I just, I, I just, I just love it. There's not much to say about it. But this t-shirt just spoke to me. I ordered one for myself and I thought, you know what? This would make a great pick for the gift guide. Uh, I can even go ahead and click on it here and uh, enlarge it a little bit. But I just love this design. Now, the thing that's even cooler is the designer of this shirt has created a number of other colors as well. So you can get this in an, uh, a, an overall blue color scheme, green, yellow, orange, purple, red, white, and I've as in Johnny. So this, this, wow. this is the I've version of the shirt. But I, I, I just love the six color version. But as I said, you can get it in any of these other color schemes if you have a particular, I, I'm actually kind of partial to the purple too. I think that one's yeah, great. I, would get the I think the blue is great. Yeah. But so, the, the, you know, it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful design. It's, it's simple and elegant, just like Apple's hardware. And of course, if, if you don't like those designs, there's so many others to choose from on here, whether they're techie or whether they're non-techie designs. Uh, they have, here's an M1. I'm not quite sure if this is meant to be the Apple M1 and the Apple M2. I believe it is with the rainbow um, colors off to the left of it there. But uh, yeah, all kinds of really cool designs on Cotton Bureau. But the my pick is the Command Plus six color shirt Very nice. I, Very nice. I, there you go. I was gonna That's say i have that pick. shirt do you really um, but I, I uh well i have it's very close i'm not sure when you when you went to the close-up i'm not sure it's the same because i think mine if you look close the dots are made up out of like uh not icons i think they're pictures of I'll have to go find it, but it is a command shirt with colors like that, and I did get it at wow. Cotton Bureau. Yeah. Um, there you so go. Great minds, great great minds think alike. Great minds think alike. I, yeah, but I, I I can tell you that shirt doesn't work well with a green screen. <laughs> no, you're right. It wouldn't. It would not work well with a green screen. <laughs> uh, Neither I does just... this hat, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one mm. one stripe disappears when I use it yeah. with green screen. Yeah, yeah. that's a feature. That's why I'm not wearing mine. <laughs> although it, I guess it would have been okay since we're not actually yeah. doing chroma keying. <laughs> <laughs> Great pick. Great pick. Great pick. Patrice, what's uh, up for round three? Um, for round three, I'm gonna go with more a techie one. Um. I think we all have a lot of devices. And I know on the show um, a lot of uh, chargers, charging bricks of some sort have been picked. Um, but this one is special. And it's special because it is, at least to my knowledge, the most powerful one you can find. Um, the company, I think, should be known. It's, uh, what's it called? Sateki, Satechi, I always forget which way it goes, but um, it's the 165 watt USB-C four port PD GAN charger. So all the, all the words you would want. Um, it has four ports, four USB-C ports for all your devices. And the cool thing is it supports um, different charging modes. So depending on which devices you connect, um, it will pick the like the maximum it can do is 165 watts, but it will pick speeds to match that. So you can connect one device with 100 watts. That's your your MacBook. You can pick like, connect two devices, 160, like your your Mac and your iPad, for example. Um, you can do 60, 60, 45, 100, 30, 30. Um, yeah, whatever. Like it, it it just it just tries to guess the best speed for each device, and I said. Maximum it can do per port is 100, and maximum it can do in total is 165. So I have one next to my sofa, and I just plug everything in, and it charges super fast. It's not the fastest for individual, because I think the Apple 
Power Brick, for example, does I think a hundred. What was it? Over over. Um, I think it does a hundred and was it a hundred and forty or something? I think that's the maximum we can do over. Um, what's it called? The magnetic connector. Now I'm blanking on the name. MagSafe. 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 Mm, yes. Yeah. I think over MagSafe it can do more for one port, um, but this is the most universal thing you can find. And it's not super mm. expensive, like a hundred and I think it was like a hundred and hundred twenty dollars. Um, it comes in US, EU, UK, Australian versions. So depending where you are in the world, get that one. It's super efficient. It's just it's just great. I love it. I'm gonna buy a second one. It's that good. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Patrice. I'm not sure, quite sure how to pronounce it. I think every time I talk to them, I seem to get a different <laughs> pronunciation. I think it's Satechi, <laughs> Satechi mm -hmm. the last one I heard, but I, I don't know. Satechi, but, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so, but, too. But, but what, whatever the name is, however you pronounce it, it's great, great quality stuff. Mm -hmm. No question. So. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Jim, round three. Uh, okay, um, I guess time for my obligatory anchor device. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's see, this is called a uh, Anchor 622 magnetic battery MagGo, 5,000 milliamp hour. So here it is. Doesn't, so it's got the mag safe go on the back of your phone and USB-C can light it up here. You can see that. And, and it's also got a cute little thing that comes off here. And it turns into that, like magnetically, turns into a little stand. Or you can do it this way. Hmm. <clears throat> so this is another alternative to the like MagSafe battery charger, and this one I like it. I think it was about forty-five bucks. They make a bigger one, but I. I think this is big enough, and the other one was like really heavier. I love the fact that it has that extra little function to it. Uh, it's not just yeah, the, the battery too. effect. Mm -hmm. It's it's such a little thing, but mm -hmm. if you use it, it can be, you know, a, a very nice little thing. So, is it Good actually job. MagSafe or is it just Qi charging? Oh yeah. Um. Nice. Oh well, I don't know about that. Yeah, because I mean, Definitely. with MagSafe, you get, I think, 15 watts in cheese. I think, was it eight or seven or something? Yeah. I, I don't. I mean, are there any magnetic chi chargers of that? Every chi chargers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay. I can find out. I said, I, I, just, I just remembered that Anchor used to not do um, like MagSafe in, in the sense of the f like full speed charging. Uh, you it know, would, they would me, use the connector, the magnets to to connect it, but it would be just a standard C right. charger. So that's uh, why that's I, was, probably, I was asking about that. It's probably what it is. Um, mm. Let's see, I mean, I'm looking not at this Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. think it matters to me. I'm, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you one thing about that is it will actually charge your phone to 100%. That's one <laughs> yeah. big advantage over the Apple one. Mm -hmm. The other the other advantage over Apple is that I have noticed in recent years, I'm sure you've all noticed too, that Apple has forgotten how to put indicators on their devices that they are charging and or charged. Mm -hmm. So if you take the Apple MagSafe battery and stick it on a charger, the little light lights up for a couple seconds and then it goes out. And you have no idea if it's continuing to charge, if it's fully charged, what the status of it is. The anchor has lights on it to indicate the status of the battery as it's charging. So not only can you go past 80% with it, 
but you can also tell when it's fully recharged again, too. So there, there's a couple advantages. I think it's slightly larger than Apple's, but uh, that that extra that extra girth um, is made up for in the other features. It's seven and a half watts. Okay. I looked it so up. So that's standard. That's standard Qi. Standard, that, yeah. I don't think it matters that uh, much. Yeah. I don't think, you know, yeah. I Unless mean, you need to, yeah. I mean, you know, with a standard charger, maybe you want it to charge fast because you're in a hurry and you want to leave. Mm -hmm. But the whole point of this is you just take it mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. 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 If, if you want it fast, just plug it in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's that's something that we it seems to get lost in the in the mix of, of the wireless stuff is if you really want it fast, plug it in. Yeah. Well, you still can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, and you know, so speaking true. of which, um, Jim, we should probably point out too that while that is, you know, just like the Apple one, while it's magnetically attached to your phone, you can plug in the charging cable into the anchor. Yeah. It will charge the anchor yeah. as well as your phone. Mm -hmm. Now the Apple MagSafe battery does that too, but that's you know, so it's just one cable you need to get both charged. Now, one thing about this one that I have, the the USB C is on the bottom. So if you're using it on the stand, it's kind of like you can't really it's weird. This mm. ecam has a delay. You can't really and I believe that right after I bought it, they came out with a new one and they moved it to here. So that you could have it on the stand and have the cable plugged in, but um, yeah, I see here upgraded versions, um, mm -hmm. and I won't. I've only had it for like a few, like three or four months, but apparently, like a month later, they came out with a different version that moved that to the to the side. Oh well. Mm -hmm. And it looks like I just checked on their site. They do have actual MagSafe devices. There's one. There's one here. It's actually mm -hmm. quite cool. It has um, you can like it has a little slide out thingy for your Apple Watch and your um, like your phone, but it's more for the desk. So, but the, yeah, that's mm -hmm. not. It's not battery cool stuff. though, right? Mm -hmm. No, it's not a battery. They have some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Good pick, Jim. Good pick. Um, I'm amending my third round pick. Uh, I had something else picked, but I decided to change um, because uh, I've ordered this before. I just about uh, an hour before we started recording, I ordered another set because I love this so much. You're going to think I'm crazy. Um, Jeff Gamut is the one that turned me on to this, and so I blame him. But I just I just got a new office chair. And I really miss the upgraded rollerblade wheels for your office chair. Now, Jeff told me about this. It's like, yeah, fine, Jeff. I'll order them from Amazon and I'll try it, and you know, then I'll send it back. And there's no way I, I will be upgrading this chair with those wheels at the earliest possible time, because it's like, you know, I, I mean, new chair. You would think that it'll be great, move it around. I miss those wheels so much, and so if you and, and what, the wheel mounts are standard, so you know they should fit pretty much any anything that you uh, any chair that you have or want. But it is just truly amazing what a difference it makes. How easy it is to move around. Um, you do have to be a little bit careful because if you're used to standard office chairs, these roll so easy, and they roll easy. You don't even have to have a chair mat. I mean, I've got I've got this on carpet, and if I'm not careful, I can shoot myself through that wall. Um, just with a little push. So the, just like rollerblades, I mean, they're super sensitive. There's, it feels like there's virtually no friction. Um, they're about 40 bucks for a pair or for a set for a standard office chair. And trust me, you will not be disappointed if you spend any time trying to roll your chair around in your office or wherever it is you're rolling your chair around. This is a great, great investment. Um, I found out about those for a different reason, and they are totally awesome and if you have a wooden floor they won't mar the floor um a regular chair will scratch your wooden floor these won't so that's why i got them and yeah they're they're totally awesome yeah 
Yeah, I, I just, I can't. Patrice, I thought I saw you shaking your antlers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're, I mean, like, I mean, forget about the standard wheels. Just, just get those. They're like, what is that? Thirty bucks, forty bucks, something like that. They're yeah. totally worth it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Mike and it's have, really easy to swap them out too. Uh, oh yeah, there's yeah. nothing to it. The, the only thing you have to pay attention to, I think there's two sizes. IKEA has their own size. So just make sure you get the ones for IKEA or for not IKEA chairs. That's it. Oh, that's a good tip. I didn't know that, Patrice. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. So, Mike, there you go. If you haven't bought anything else, you have to buy the rollerblade wheels for your office chair. What Does it do anything about this squeaking? Mm -hmm. Squeak, 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 squeak every time I move around? Not for not for the chair, but, uh, but I mean, it, if you they are, they're silent. Mm -hmm. To roll around, I mean, yeah. so it, it, yeah, I, that it'll solve that part of the problem anyway. Today's Mac Voices is supported by the Mac Voices Slack. The Mac Voices Slack is where you can connect with the members of the Mac Voices Live panel and other Mac Voices patrons. Get in on the discussions, agree or disagree with our opinions, and get your voice heard. Sign up at Patreon.com/MacVoices, and thanks for supporting. Mac Voices. That's three rounds. So now we're down to the nitty gritty. Mm -hmm. Now you, if you have pet picks left, you have to pick your best one um, and explain why it's your best one. Um, so, Mike, that means decision time. Which one are you going to pick for round four? Well, I didn't realize these were supposed to be in a particular order, Chuck. I picked oh, well, my best one first. I, I, I no, you always best keep your last. Best for last. <laughs> although, although I will say I do think this is a pretty darn good pick. Um, I again, so I believe it was before we started recording. Um, I was sharing a few dad jokes. And, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, too. <laughs> um, but, but I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm going to lead off with another one, because if that Command Plus t-shirt was software for your body, <laughs> da, da, da. then, then, uh, it was bad, it was bad, I know. <laughs> then, the infographic posters that are sold by, by my next pick are the hardware for your walls. Now, I first came across this website. The website is called PopChart. I first came across PopChart um, when I heard about and purchased a, an infographic that they created that was called The Insanely Great History of Apple. And I believe I may have even shared that as a pick on your show, Chuck. If I didn't share it on your show, it was certainly on my show where I shared it. But it was called The Insanely Great History of Apple, and it was an infographic showing basically charting the entire history of Apple through the little infographics of all the devices that they they created and put out. Now, unfortunately, or sadly, I should say, that, that that is no longer available. But since then, I have gone on to purchase several more posters from PopChart that chart things as varied as football clubs of Great Britain, as well as, and I know this is going to be one of Chuck's favorites, he's going to probably want to run out and buy this right away, but the field guide to famous felines. Now, I bought that one. I bought that one for my daughter. Um, so it, there are far more infographics on this site than tech. It's much more than pop culture, um, but it's definitely definitely nerdy. So whether the person that you are looking to buy for is a um, horse nerd or a wine nerd or a music nerd or a bird nerd or even a fashion nerd, PopChart seems to have an infographic to make just about anyone happy. Now, since I am a tech nerd, I went through and I found some of my favorites that they have right now. And the very first one that I latched on to was the history of video game controllers. So it starts all the way back with the Magnavox Odyssey, and it ends with the Xbox Series 10. And it's, it's you know what, if you don't mind, Chuck, I'm going to switch over because I have it pulled up on, on here as well. Um, oh. I'm going to just switch over and show you. So this is um, an example of one of their infographics. So if I go ahead and click on this and, and zoom in on it, we can see that uh, they cover anything from the Atari 2600, 
to the SNES Super Advantage, uh, the Memorex. Gosh, do you remember that one? The Memorex. <laughs> God. The, you know, I mean, there are some pretty obscure controllers on here. The NES Power Glove, um, the Famicom. Anyway, so this is just one example of an infographic that they have on their site. Uh, some of the others that I picked out, uh, they have the cameras. I like this one, too. This is a visual compendium of cameras going all the way back to the 1888 Kodak camera. Um, a couple notables missing in here, um, but, the, you know, like the Canon AE-1 is not in this chart, but that's okay. It's it's still a pretty cool infographic for someone who is a camera nerd. Um, and then one of the others that I picked out was the history of typewriters, which I just think is fascinating. I mean, as I think they even said this on their site, but it's it's the original word processor, right? Yeah, here it says the throwback to the original word processor. And again, I was a little disappointed to see that they did not include the Woodstock typewriters. Now, you mentioned Woodstock earlier, Chuck, uh, when we were talking about the Today Show filming there a week or so ago. But Woodstock is famous for at one time being uh, the typewriter capital of the world. I mean, they, they, so there's a lot of, uh, old wood, Woodstock typewriters out there. And unfortunately it does not seem to be represented in this, uh, chart, but it's still a really cool infographic. And those are just the kind of techie nerdy things that stood out to me. Um, one, uh, that if you are a comic book nerd, uh, one that might be interesting to you is a complete rundown of all the Iron Man armors. Now, I should probably I should probably wrap this up. I'm going to wrap this up because again, it's it's a pretty straightforward thing here. Go to popchart. It's popchart.co. <laughs> Go to popchart.co and just check it out. Um, they're they're very reasonably priced. They're about about thirty dollars or so for eighteen by twenty four. Uh, some of them are a little bit larger than that. Um, but I should probably wrap this up by saying that these are not the cheap O posters like you would find rolled up in the corner of a Walmart. Uh, every print that I have received is at least 18 by 24 or larger, and it's printed on a very nice heavyweight poster stock that's ready for framing. Um, now, that that's how you can order it. You can order it as the print only. And as I said, the, the history of typewriters, the visual compendium of typewriters, 30 bucks. 30 bucks for a high quality uh, um, gift that you can give to someone. No, it's not bad at all. Uh, they package them up very nicely. They, they, uh, I, I got out. Um, I don't have it hanging yet, but I got out my, my Apple uh, history, the insanely great history of Apple. I, I took it out earlier just to kind of double check the weight of it because it doesn't, it doesn't say on their website, the weight of paper that they print on, but it's a very nice heavyweight poster paper. And um, I got that out and I noted that not only was the the poster coiled, but then they then wrapped it in a protective paper and then put it in a nice heavyweight mailing tube to get it to me. So there was really no possibility of it being damaged until I attempted to take it out of the tube. Uh, so, uh, which, which I've been known to damage things as I take them out of the tubes, but I didn't, it's, it's in, it's in very good shape. But if you opt to not frame it yourself or to not just put it up on the wall with sticky tack or whatever, they will frame it for you too. So they have, um, uh, you can get the print plus a black frame. You can get a walnut frame. You can get a white frame. I think the colors that they offer for the frames differ a little bit based on, the uh, poster that you're getting, I could be wrong on that, but something like uh, framing the history of typewriters in a black frame adds $128 to it, uh, which is really not bad. If you've ever had something custom frame, that's that's not bad at all um, to custom frame an 18 by 24 print. So great site, popchart.co, um, right at the moment, uh, of course, if you order, you're probably not going to get it in time for Christmas, but they do have free standard shipping and they even have a save 10% thing if you sign up for their newsletter. So great site, lots of great infographic posters. I've purchased a number of them myself. I love them and uh, I can't recommend them highly enough.
So there you go. That's my fourth pick. I may pass on the feline chart, Mike, but I'll check out the other. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty cool poster, Jack. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think you word for it. <laughs> I'm more likely to look at the Iron Man poster. Uh, yeah, that one's pretty cool, too, actually. Patrice, your final pick for 2022. What do you got? My final pick for 2022. Um, I, I mean, So this one is probably, I mean, I'm going to go all the way to the, the dark side, the nerdy side. Um, this is probably for either for yourself or for the like really good friend where you know that they need or want this. Um, my cool thing is a UFO, not that kind of UFO. It's um, <laughs> it's a it's the Ubiquiti U6 Pro access point. So it's a little it's it's a quite a decent size. It looks like a UFO, like it's it's disc shaped, like what like it has an LED like around it, and it's a disc. So I can't you say, um, but it's a Wi-Fi six access point. It does like everything you want, like two point four gigahertz, five gigahertz, different bands. It has um, like a quite a high throughput rate, five point three gigabits. Has a power over Ethernet in port, so there's no power connection to it. You just power it with power over Ethernet. Um, it has a gigabit port. I said, it has everything you want if you have a Ubiquiti system and you want to connect to it. And like there, I mean, they're a step up price-wise, but they're also a step up um, quality-wise and feature-wise from, from Eero. Eero is for, you don't want to deal with it. Like it just works. It's great. Era is awesome. But if you want more, Ubiquiti is your, your go-to. And they do anything from like small local, like your home installation to big stadiums. Like whatever you want, they have it. Um, so highly recommend it. I've had it for, I think, I want to say a year, close to a year probably. And I'm super happy with it. It just, it just does its thing. It's like no hassle. Um, their, I mean, their their gear is just perfect. I, I, I don't know what to, what else to say about it. Um, if you need Wi-Fi six, if you need something more, if you need a step up in in managed, this is a managed device, um, in managed access points without having to configure every little detail, because you can do that with Ubiquiti, but you don't have to. I think that's the cool thing about them. It's not that you have to go in and go into like a management console somewhere and like an ugly website and whatever, and then tweak a parameter by whatever, increasing to a magic value. You don't have to do that with Ubiquiti. They have good apps. They have good interfaces. They're kind of, for me, I would say they're the Apple under, like within the realm of like network gear. So if you need more, this is your, this is your pick. It's great. Very nice. I, I like that you went geeky at the end, Patrice. Mm -hmm. I was like, let's go out with a bang. Yeah. Seems apro apropos with the ample antlers mm -hmm. for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you get better reception with the antlers, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. yeah, totally. I can totally do. And I can also fly away with my UFO. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs Rudolph? <laughs> exactly. Uh, Jim, last round pick. Where are you going to go? I think you're muted, Jim. <laughs> he His went pick mute. is a secret. That was, it was an improvement. Um, <laughs> I'm going to switch up. And uh, I was going to pick AirPods, but AirPods Max, but they're Apple products. Everybody knows about them. So, you know, no point. Uh, so I'm going to pick a different audio device that nobody knows about, but I actually really like it. And it's called a Monster Boomerang. This is it here. Okay. Looks cool. And yeah, they're about 80 bucks and it's a Bluetooth device. And what you do is you put it on like this and it's got speakers and microphones here. And um, you know, you can listen or you can you can talk on it too, uh, like on, on the phone. Um, now it's you know it's not private, 
if there was somebody standing three feet from me, they can hear it. Um, but I find it's really great for around the house, like mm -hmm. doing the dishes, folding the laundry, vacuuming, making the bed, um, you know, maybe even going for a short walk around the neighborhood. Um, they're really comfortable. They don't cover your ears. They're not in your ears. I do have AirPods Pro, uh, which are nice for being so portable, but I, you know, for having something on for, you know, this is just like, I don't feel it. It's, even though it's much bigger than an AirPod, it's so light that, you know, I just don't feel it at all. And you still hear what's going on around you. And um, I, I use them a lot. Um, in fact, you know, like the AirPods Max, I mostly just use for, for this, for Zoom calls. Um, but for around the house, this is, this is my go-to. Uh, and then I use the AirPods Pro when I'm, you know, like at the store or, or something like mm -hmm. that. This doesn't work too good for that because it's so, you know, it's not private. Um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was thinking about that, like doing the laundry, unloading the dishwasher, stuff at home, cleaning, like they're perfect for that because you still have your, like, you don't cover your ears. Yeah. Like if you have kids in the house or something, you kind of have to make sure that they, that you can hear them if something happens or if they need you or whatever. Um, you can just yep. use that. It's pretty cool. Yep. And so it's got, uh, it, I, it's apparently waterproof. I'm not sure, you know, I haven't tried it in the shower. I do have a shower speaker um, that I listen to podcasts, but it, it does have like, there's a waterproof cover on the, so it does, it does use USB-C. Um, it's not one of those infernal micro USB things that we used to have. And then there's <laughs> controls on the side. There's an on off button and then a play pause and then, and then volume. Um, and it's interesting because I have these different devices. And so I, I don't seem to have any trouble, you know, like this has the little digital crown. I've got bows that you tap and slide on over here you've got the airpods have their controls and these have theirs and i seem to like just automatically know you know my fingers just they don't have a, a trouble like oh this is the wrong device i just i just uh work each device and uh i go back and forth a lot so i have four different audio devices or five if you count the bluetooth the waterproof bluetooth speaker so i, I guess i'm an aficionado of uh Bluetooth connectivity. No, no lightning. No lightning cables for me. No lightning. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it looks like a pretty cool device, Jim. But what I'm intrigued by is it, if I buy this for someone, can I get them to then come to my house and do the laundry and make the bed and fold the you know fold and do the dishes and everything? I'd, I'm I'm kind of going the other direction on it. It's <laughs> there's an idea. <laughs> I, you know what your I thought it was may, going to be. Your doing? mileage may may, may vary. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, but I, actually, I find that you know, like, I don't mind doing the dishes. You know, I mm -mm. put on for Matt guys only, and you know, the 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 time flies by. You know, um, so it it really uh, it turns things that are like drudgery into oh yeah, this is great. I get to. Listen to a, a nice podcast for an extra ten minutes, or, or an audio book. Um, so, yeah. And I, Mike, I know. Think I was... don't think you're gonna. I don't think you're gonna get somebody else to make your bed for you. Okay, well, it was just <laughs> Mike. What, what did you think it was gonna be? Well, now I have two things. I have two things to share. So, so first, just a little side note on. Uh, thank you, Jim, for mentioning the podcast for Mac eyes only is the name of my podcast but so right. many people thought it was called for mac guys only that i actually registered the domain name for mac guys only because i would swallow like somehow when i said for mac eyes only it would it's the the way i pronounce it people would think i was saying guys and i'm like no no it's not just for guys it's for everybody everybody can enjoy the show but I, I, people thought i, I was saying was for eyes, mac guys but... only yeah well you know <laughs> And so I, I, Jim, pro I th might have even shared this with you, Jim. I actually registered that domain ma name many, many years ago because people kept calling it that. So I, it just forwards over to for Mac eyes only. 
Uh, now, I am there. Here's the real point I was going to raise. I am so old. I am so old that I remember in the early 80s, it was around the time. It was around the time that we purchased our Atari 2600, our Atari VCS, new, okay, that we were in a department store. I don't know if these were nationwide or regional, but it was a department store called Venture. And uh, that's where we purchased our Atari. And I remember seeing a product there that I thought was pretty cool. And I thought this was some sort of futuristic variant of it. The product that I saw <laughs> back then, and I've never forgotten about it, is called the Bone Phone. Bone Phone, mm. F-O-N-E, Bone Phone. Yep. And it was bone conduction, a bone conduction radio. And you would mm -hmm. wear it around your neck and you can turn get, it on. There, there, and, there are bone conduction Bluetooth devices, but that yeah. is not what this is. Mm -hmm. it, the, I and I thought that was going to be some sort of. And just now, I did a search on Bone Phone, and if if you want one, you can buy a brand new inbox Bone Phone on on eBay for ninety five dollars. So there you go. It probably <laughs> sold for that, eight dollars when it was new. Yeah. <laughs> I'd forgotten about the Bone Phone, but yeah, I, I remember. And it's too, accompanied. I... If you look at the images, it's accompanied by all these wonderful images of um, women in long, like uh, tube socks with the stripes on the top and roller skates. So, you know, that's how old this device is where everyone's wearing the early eighties fashion like that. Hmm. But yeah, bone phone. Wow. It was crazy, crazy yeah. device. But I, I thought this was going to be like some sort of bone conduction thing, but that that's cool. That's cool that you can wear it around <clears> like that. The only thing about this is I, I, I wish you could get it with the Apple H1 chip or W chip or whatever, you know, the chip is in this that, ought, you know, uh, you know, automatically connects to different devices. But my other thought was futuristic boomerang, but that's you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I could, I could, I could kind of see that too. Well, I was trying to look up bone phone, and now you two won't leave me alone, so I just have to close the window. <laughs> I found it. Uh, I found well, an gonna... article with with oh. the with an original photo. So, isn't that crazy? <laughs> and that is funny. definitely not waterproof i would say no um, no but yeah not, it not. came it i i forgot about this part it came in a case a carry case that was shaped like a bone like a bone <laughs> like a dog bone <laughs> marketing genius oh, at work uh, i love the 80s i'm so in love with the 80s i'm a child of the <laughs> 80s so there you go the technological breakthrough of 1979. <laughs> yeah. Well, this just tickles me to no end. Yeah. Well, I'm going to wrap up this year's gift guide with something that's very practical. Um, I'm, I'm kind of shocked. It's, I think it may have been mentioned in passing a couple times, but it was never an actual pick. Um, and it's something that you could implement um on if you're if you celebrate Christmas, wherever you celebrate, it could you could implement it that day, and it would start to benefit you. And that is Backblaze. Um, mm. Backblaze is an on, if you're not familiar with it, Backblaze is an online online storage solution um, that is so easy to set up and so seamless. You it does not affect your the use of your Mac. You turn it on, and you can control how much bandwidth you want it to use. If you want to get your Mac backed up fast, you give it all the bandwidth you got. If you prefer not to, definitely not to have it interfere with anything, you just turn that down a little bit. You can designate folders not to back up, so that if you mm -hmm. have particularly large files that may be transient, and frankly, that's I have that on my Mac because of uh, video files that get used for Mac Voices that I don't, I mean, frankly, they're never going to get backed up because they're tr they're transitioning in and out so fast. So why chew up bandwidth, you know, backing up something that's partial? So I just have a, de a folder that's designated, do not back up to Backblaze, throw them in there, and, you know, they that's where they live until I need them. Um, but the, the client is, it was, re was updated, I guess now it's probably been two or three years ago. Um, it's just, it, it it has all the controls you could could want and need. Uh, the help is terrific. Uh, if you do have any challenges or issues, you can go to Backblaze. They have a lot of support, but you can also get in touch with them. They're very responsive, and it's super super affordable. 
Mm-hmm. So if and and I'm I'm trying to think of all the positives here. And if you decide that you really have a massive uh, storage situation that you want to get backed up right away, you can send them a hard drive, and they will populate mm-hmm. your backup with that hard drive. And then after that, your backups will just be incremental from what you've changed. So so many good things here. Uh, you could give this. You could decide to give this on New on Christmas Eve, have it set up Christmas morning, and it'll be it'll start backing up to things while you're watching football and eating turkey or whatever it is that you do on Christmas Day. Um, so I, I, it's it's one of those things that it's not the sexiest thing in the world right up to the point that you need it and you've mm-hmm. lost that file or your machine goes bad and you you need that that then all of a sudden it becomes really really sexy. So and again super affordable. So backblaze.com uh, go check it out and give it for your family, or give it to yourself. Mm-hmm. This would have been my fifth round pick. It it was on my list. Um, it's I think it's seven. I want to say it's seven dollars a month, um, and it's totally worth it. One side benefit is um, you can access your backup on your phone. So if you have a file and you're out and about, and you're like, oh, there was this file, and it's not whatever you didn't store it in your in your OneDrive or Dropbox or something. If it's in your backup, you can get to it. They have a they have an iOS app. Yeah, and in so general, I, Backblaze I is great. I, I have all my CDN stuff on Backblaze, mm-hmm. so that's a professional site, but right, they're really good. Mike, yeah, I, I actually have a, a question about Backblaze. So, so many of these online backup services have issues with external drives, and you know the the fact of life now with modern Macs, especially something like the Mac Studio or the Mac Mini, is that you can't get by with just the internal drive on that computer. You have to get something like the OWC Mini Stack STX or something like that, which was one of your picks, Chuck. That I would have picked too if you hadn't picked it because it's a really <laughs> cool device. But you know, in in that in that one device, I have connected to the Mac Studio and uh, an eight eight or 10, I can't remember now, eight or 10 terabyte traditional hard drive, and then a second two Mm -hmm. terabyte SSD, which are both installed in that STX. So many of these services don't like to back up external drives because they're often, you know, just filled with junk. (laughs) But in this case, it's, it's, it's real life, you know, real life important stuff I, I don't want to lose. How does Backblaze handle that? Surprisingly enough, I can answer that. Um, Yeah. So first of all, obviously, the population would be an issue because it it would. I mean, if you have a ten terabyte drive, it's going to take a long time. So you might want to send that to Backblaze to do. But Backblaze will back up anything that's attached to your Mac, and Mm -hmm. you have a thirty day period that if you disconnect it for twenty nine days. And then plug it back in, you know, everything is fine. It'll just keep on doing its backup thing, and all your files are still there. If you go past that 30 days, then Backblaze says, okay, we're not backing this up anymore. And they start, gotcha. you know, taking taking it off. Yeah. So as long as you've plugged in that drive sometime in the last 30 days, you're fine. All your files stay on Backblaze. Yeah. Um, okay. There's a little bit of a they have in their system preferences, you can select the hard drives you want to back up. And the, the reason for the 30 days is they keep a version history of 30 days. Um, so after 30 days, they start to like delete all the backups, and then that might get purged. Yeah. By default, and, and at least. You can actually upgrade and, and extend that, and I guess then it would also take, like, extend that. Yeah. And I think now that you can actually buy a plan that lets you... Mm-hmm. Um, it's not 30 days. It'll, it'll remain online for a year. Yep. Um, same thing. Yep. So, but you bring up a great point, Mike, you know, that we all have more and more stuff. Um, and there is no upper limit to Backblaze. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, okay. I mean, I'm sure if you, at some point they might call and say, what are you, what are you doing? But, um, <laughs> you know, you can, you can back up those, you know, your X studio and those five, 10 terabyte drives or whatever. Uh, and they won't bat an eye. Yeah, and it wasn't it wasn't the maximum capacity so much, but the fact that they're external drives. And I don't want to mm-hmm. unintentionally malign uh, another service, so I'm not going to use names. But one of the big ones just outright mm-hmm. won't back up external drives. They just won't do it. Yep. 
Yeah. And uh, it, I'm, well, why not? I mean, I have two. They're plugged in constantly on my computer and I can't back them up. That's silly. Uh, and so that's mm-hmm. what that was my main question is, can you back up an external drive? One. And then two, Patrice answered the other question. How, how long does it retain that backup? Well, it's connected mm-hmm. to my Mac 24-7. So, right. yeah, that would yeah, never be an issue. That 30 days would never be an issue. You do have to go into the settings. It doesn't automatically back up uh, external drives. I've got a, a mini stack also. And so I've got one of the partitions set up right now to go to uh, stack blades, but not the others. For example, you probably don't want a time machine to back up to back blades. <laughs> of course not. That's true. Right. Yeah. Of course not. Yeah. 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 Right. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, one other thing, cool. just to make, I, I don't want to put too fine a point on it, but um, this is a true backup system. So this is not like Carbon Copy Cloner. It, it's not cloning your drive. It's backing up your data. So if mm-hmm. you if you go into the settings, you can see that there are f- certain folders and certain file types that it does not back up. And that usually, those those are the files and folders you usually find in the folders that you're not supposed to be mucking around in anyway, you know, that, that have to do with the system. Yeah. Um, so if, if you're looking for a clone, you need to look somewhere else, but if you're looking for genuine backup and I, Mike, mm-hmm. I, I won't malign another system because I don't want to be sued for slander, even though truth is an absolute defense. Um, but, and this has been a long time ago, but uh, at work we were using another system and the computer failed and we've, I mean, it took an act of Congress for them to get get the uh, a, a drive the, ba- the drive back to us a drive back to us. Yeah, and it's like never, never, never again mm-hmm. will I will I use yeah. anything but Backblaze. Yeah. So, Have you ever had yeah. to get a, a a backup drive from them? From from Backblaze? Mm-hmm. No, I have not. I have. because you really okay. There mm-hmm. it, it was positive experience. It's totally. Yeah. They, they mm-hmm. had it. I can't remember if it was one day or two and you can either keep the drive and they charge you for it. Or if you send it back within a month, I think they won't charge you, mm-hmm. but I yeah. kept it. Yeah. Uh, and I just checked the version history. Um, one year is $2 a month extra per computer. You can also select forever. Then it's $2 a month plus the standard five cents per gigabyte per month. Uh, sorry, not five mm-hmm. cents point. Zero zero five cents, I should say. Even better. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just they just do. It feels like they do everything right. You know, I mean, yes, they have to make money, and they're charging a fair price. But just the the uh, the whole experience of backing up the whole experience, uh, the little bit I've had, and Jim's had more of using that backup service and getting your data back is is just outstanding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I remember when they started, and Crash Plan was the big one then. And you yeah. know, it seemed like Backblaze <laughs> had a hard time getting traction. But I was immediately like, I liked it so much more. They and they were so open. Like they had. Did you ever see the? I haven't seen them lately. Maybe I just haven't looked. But it, you know, they they make their own hardware, and they open sourced it. So mm-hmm. and they had these really detailed articles, and you could get the plans and everything. Uh, for the 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 modules that they, that they have and um you know so they, they talked a lot about how you know the service actually worked and you know they still do the i think quarterly reports on drive statistics that yeah. are that are you know Quarterly. so I, I think it's just a a, a great company and I, i've been so happy to see that mm-hmm. you know they they wound up hoovering up the field more or less yeah. Um, and and, and uh, the other ones fell away, which I yeah. thought was good. If you're looking for like for your business for like uh, reliable and relatively cheap online storage, like S3 object storage or like CDN or whatever, there, as far as I've been able to find, the cheapest you can find. Yeah, it's called Amazon B2. is crazy expensive. Uh, it's called B2, yeah. They're crazy. Like Amazon is crazy expensive compared to them. Yeah. That concludes Mac Voices Holiday Gift Guide number six. 
and oh no, wait, or is it seven? I don't know. The last Mac voice is already <laughs> gift guide. I'm I'm so confused. Um, the the but best. The, the, the best. The best. There, you, there you go. There you go. Um, I want to thank you guys for for doing this. Um, I know this was sort of running at the last minute. The schedules have been a little bit crazier this holiday season than than others. Um, but I'm glad we all got to get together. And there's some really great picks in this episode, as well as in every other one. Mm-hmm. Let's go around the room, find out where you can f- catch up with these people when they're not here, and uh, wish everyone a happy holidays. Mike, what's the best place for people to connect with you? Best places to connect with me would be uh, for MacEyesOnly.com. That's my, well, I guess it's a twice a month now podcast. We do it on the second and fourth Friday every month. We record live. And then I edit those live recordings down to the actual audio podcast that gets released. But we have a lot of fun doing it now. We've been doing it live since August. And uh, we just started our 17th year uh, for Mac wow. Guys Only, which is wow. pretty awesome. Wow. Pretty awesome. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you could also find me at MacStock, which is MacStock Conference and Expo. And that's... Uh, we will hopefully be have uh, um, yeah. Let me try that again. We'll hopefully have a little bit more information about Mac Stock Seven for 2023 in uh, well the next month or so. Great, nice. thank you, Mike. Really appreciate it. Happy holidays to you and the family. Thanks, Chuck. Patrice, what's the uh, as if I didn't know? What's the best place to uh, catch <laughs> up with you when you're not at the North Pole hanging out with Santa? <laughs> Yeah, you only hear it at least once a week. Um, yeah, you can find me every week with Chuck on the Mac Show on the British Tech Network. British Tech Network. That is hard to say when it's past midnight. Um, also on the Big Show where we talk about the non-Apple stuff with some other awesome people. Everything I'm doing, all the like social media links, the projects, the podcast, like literally anything you can find on thepatrice.com. That is also a redirect because nobody can spell my last name. So I just, the Patrice, that's easy. Um, and if you want to listen to really cool people, like to talk about food, food-related stories and memories, I have an interview show called Foodie Flashback at foodieflashback.com. Oh, super Great. cool. Thank you so much, Patrice. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Mr. Ray. The man who's what? looking for a double-ended like lightning cable. Yeah, well, I, 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 I feel obligated to give you the respect you deserve. Um, where oh. can folks connect with you? Uh, well, a good place is proview.com, P-R-O-V-U-E, weird spelling. Um, and actually, since this is the holidays, a holiday episode, um Another good place is going to be, starting on Friday, December 23rd, the artisanalsoftwarefestival.com. Um, hmm. So that's uh, Winterfest. So, you know, that could be uh, another good place for last-minute uh, uh, Christmas gifts. If you know somebody that, that needs some cool Mac software, it's a group of about a dozen uh, indie Mac software companies. And I don't even actually know exactly who's participating this year. Um, but um, that's going to open on Friday at artisanalsoftwarefestival.com. So drop by and, and check that out. Great. Thank wow. you, Jim. Good. That's good to know. Nice to have that, that mm-hmm. one last extra option for those last-minute gifts. And nice. I hope people notice that Jim actually switched out his cap during the show. Well, I noticed. I know Mike noticed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I noticed too. But I hope everybody did. Oh man, hey, that's Jim, another one holidays. that doesn't work well with green screen. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's why I didn't put it on because I I knew I was going to use the green screen. But then, since we're not doing chroma keying, it yeah. works fine with the green screen as long as you're not doing chroma keying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck is going to do that in post <laughs> um, Folks, I want to thank everyone who has participated in the Mac Voices Holiday Gift Guides um, All the panels uh, recommending all the gifts It's been a really great year These are always some of my favorite shows of the year Just because you get together with friends And as you can tell, we have a lot of laughs together I hope that you and yours have a lot of laughs And a lot of holiday fun Regardless of what holidays you celebrate one more reminder that you can find all the gift picks 
Uh, for this episode in the show notes here, you'll also find links to the master list on the Mac Voices uh, website and also the uh, to the uh, Flipboard that we do for all the holiday gifts. My friends are showing off their virtual, their, their, their Christmas trees, such as they are. Um, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. We will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I like the little head shake, Patrice with the jingles. No. <laughs> Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, Consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.